What happened to Kaufmo? New episode release date. How will our favorite characters be abstracted? We'll explore all of this and more in this huge, amazing digital video. Hello everyone, and today we're going to dive as deep as we can into the amazing digital circus and talk about the most important parts of this 3D universe, because the date of the new episode will be announced in this video and it will make you very happy. In the meantime, stock up on candy or play this video in the background while you go about your business, because it's worth watching all the way through. Let's get started. What happened to Kaufmo? While you may think that everything is clear and obvious, I want to assure you in advance that it is not quite so. Kaufmo is a full-fledged member of the circus like everyone else, or at least he was. And if you listen to the intro of the episode where all the characters were introduced, originally all the character names were sung as they were supposed to be, including the part about Kaufmo, but as soon as his name was said, where is he? And instead of a real character, we just saw a cardboard cutout with a clown picture. I would like to say that Pomni is also a clown, but in this video, when I use the word clown, I am referring specifically to Kaufmo. How long Kaufmo has been a resident of the circus is not exactly known, but many people I've talked to, including myself, think that Kaufmo has been in the damn circus for a relatively short time. As Kinger once said, Kaufmo has been acting more and more out of character lately. One could even say that our clown has been acting very strange. After all, he has been talking about a way out all the time. This may sound strange, but Kaufmo is a clown, and a clown is the backbone of the circus. I mean, really, can you think of a circus that doesn't have a clown in it? My point is that Kaufmo was the star of an amazing digital circus before he disappeared. Pomni, like Kaufmo, is not really a clown, but rather a jester. But I don't think this is a very fundamental point. Maybe every clown who joins this circus automatically knows a little bit more than all the other characters. This is very easy to prove just by looking at the reaction of all the other characters in the show to Pomni's words about the exit. I'm more than sure that if Kaufmo had been with them, he would have realized what Pomni was talking about. Many characters have stated that before Kaufmo became so uptight, he was a good-natured and funny guy who understood the horror of what was happening more than anyone else, yet remained just as cheerful and upbeat. As Ragatha told us, our clown was always trying to make a joke or cheer everyone up in some way, but not everyone appreciated it. Before the scattered Kaufmo attacked Ragatha, she confessed to him and apologized for not appreciating all that Kaufmo did for them. To sum up this chapter, Kaufmo was the soul of the group, always with a funny story or joke to tell, but at some point, things didn't go according to plan. We were often told that it was the characters who started going crazy that scattered. Even Zubal said it was very strange that it was Kaufmo who scattered because she thought Kinger would be next. Even you and I have clearly noticed that this chess piece has major mental problems. He is very anxious, screams all the time, behaves very strangely, and yet he is the longest lived inhabitant of this amazing digital circus. But it was Kaufmo who scattered. We all remember Kinger saying that Kaufmo was always talking about getting out. This obsession became Kaufmo's main problem, which led to his disappearance. In this case, one could easily argue that it's not the characters who suffer from mental disorders who disappear, but those who have gone mad with thoughts of leaving, which is Kaufmo. But this is just an assumption that we will support with facts. It's strange that Kaufmo was fine, but at some point he went crazy. We have already seen that Kaufmo started out as a funny character, but his jokes did not bring anyone any joy, which did not affect his condition. Gradually, he went from being a happy, cheerful guy to a depressed man with obsessive thoughts that dictated the rules of his life. It is not known exactly what kind of relationship our clown had with the other characters, but we can safely say that at least Ragatha always laughed at his jokes, and Jax did not care about Kaufmo or anyone else. In the midst of his budding depression, Kaufmo didn't have enough support to get out of it and get back to normal. The other characters hardly encouraged him, thinking he was crazy when he started talking his way out of it, which only reinforced his belief that no one here needed him. Everyone remembers what Kaufmo's room looks like? I doubt it's always looked like this. And I don't think Kaufmo drew all this in one day. It takes weeks or months to draw something like this. But no one has ever visited Kaufmo's room to see how he's doing or to ask how he's feeling. In Kaufmo's room, you can see a huge number of exit inscriptions. There are various pictures that we don't understand, where Kaufmo is depicted as an evil clown, or the strangest picture where he has drawn himself but only in a dissipated form. But the main picture in Kaufmo's room is a drawing of an embittered cane, who has huge fangs like a dog or a wolf instead of the usual teeth, chasing after the unfortunate clown. But this drawing will come in handy in the next chapter, so we won't focus on it for now. Kaufmo is depressed and left all alone in this merry circus, and then he decides to find a way out. All of the above was a huge disappointment to fully understand what comes next in the video. After that, Kaufmo started going crazy looking for a way out. He realized that he had to get out of here because everything shown here is a lie. 
we all noticed that strange drawing where the evil Cain is chasing Kaufmo with the desire to eat him, or just destroy him. But why is that? If you think about it, Cain actually becomes very strange and evil at the mention of the exit, as proven by the scenes where Pomni starts acting as strange as Kaufmo did in the past. If Kaufmo saw the exits, he most likely saw the void, as well as the basement where all the scattered characters are hidden in the form of monsters. This is supported by the drawings that can be seen on Kaufmo's wall just before he disappears. Realizing all the horrors of further life here, Kofmo was able to imagine one of the exits, after which he found himself in the same office as Pomni, but not understanding what to do next, he quietly explored it and came to the last door leading to the void. Like Pomni, Kane was able to recognize this and teleported to Kaufmo to stop him and take him back to the circus. But Kaufmo, determined to leave, tried a few more times, and each time Kane came to him and managed to stop him. Perhaps after one of these journeys, the very situation that Kaufmo had painted on his wall as a clue to the rest of the circus that Kane was not to be trusted and should be feared. After many failed attempts, Kaufmo has an idea how to outsmart Kane and get into the void without anyone knowing. But why the void? After Kaufmo realizes that Kane is not who he says he is, he assumes that if the void was just a room that leads nowhere and where the character just stays forever, then most likely Kane would just leave Kaufmo there to wander around for the rest of his life after so many attempts to save him. But no, he saved him every time, which means that by going through the void, the character is going somewhere he shouldn't be. There would be another door leading to the basement, and Kaufmo knew it because he had gotten there that way himself. From all of this, Kaufmo realized that there was a real world outside of the void. By outsmarting Kane, Kaufmo was able to get out of the amazing digital circus. Once Kane realized this, there was nothing he could do, for all his power ended only inside the amazing digital circus. The only option was to make it look like Kaufmo was a complete psycho and had gone so far into himself that he disintegrated and became a monster. In general, Kane always does this because I find it very strange that all monsters look exactly the same. It's as if they were pre-programmed NPS that Kane creates in such cases. And so we can say that all the other characters who are no longer in the circus didn't dissipate at all, but on the contrary were able to gather all their strength into one fist, despite all the horror going on inside them, and finally get out of this terrible place. But we can ask a logical question, why do the monsters stay in the basement after Kane puts them there, if they are pre-made NPS? Thinking about this question, I found the answer. See, Kane has to maintain this mechanism in the circus, that when you start seeing exits and freaking out about how to get out of the circus, a character is bound to see the basement behind one of the doors and go to Kane for an explanation of what he has seen. At this point, Kane will explain that all characters who suffer the same thing as Kaufmo will definitely become the same and end up in the basement. And these thoughts might scare a potential refugee away from the idea of escaping the circus. When Kaufmo manages to get out of the circus, the most important thing in his life will be to understand the principle of how humans get there. After all, it has long been known that only Kane and Bubble are artificial intelligence and all the other characters are human. Maybe it will take weeks, months, or years, but given Kaufmo's tenacity and what this circus has done to him, it seems to me that Kaufmo will be able to understand this process and stop it, thus preventing even the slightest chance for new people to enter the amazing digital circus. And the first character I want to tell you about is Queenie. We've all seen her on the mysterious door, but unfortunately not many people know her story, which will be told in the second episode. Let's talk about her past and understand what's going on with her now, and then we'll talk about her role in the new episode. I want to say that this is going to be about every character in this video. Queenie, as many of you know, is Kinger's wife who appeared in the circus at the same time as our crazy old man. But since it has long been known that Kinger has been living in the digital circus for about 20 years, he has been living alone for about half of that time. Kinger and Quenny were some of the first inhabitants of the digital circus, and since there weren't as many characters as there are now, Kane's focus was on these characters. And if Kane has decided to make you his main target, then we can say that your mental state will be very much in question. After all, Kaufmo has already proven to us that Kane is not the kind of character he wants to appear to be. Or the state of Pomni at the end of the last episode also makes us think about it. After all, if this secret room was really created by Kane, it means that he knows all the pain points of every inhabitant and will be more than happy to use them to drive the character crazy. Queenie was the first woman in the digital circus, and since Kane hadn't had contact with girls in a long time, all of his love energy was focused on Queenie. So the first year or two in the digital circus was a fabulous time for her because she got absolutely everything she wanted. But unfortunately for the toothy administrator, our Queenie eventually realized what was really going on here and started treating Kane like a villain and he didn't like it very much. And it's not that Queenie gave Kane any reason to think about their relationship, but she thought that every character had the same life. 
Kinger also noticed all the signs of attention towards his wife and at first even rudely told Kane that he'd better end it. And the moment Queenie said directly that nothing could happen between her and Kane, the real digital hell began. Every day Kane sent several dummies to Kinger and Queenie, and we've already talked about what dummies can do. He wouldn't give them food, he wouldn't let them sleep, he would leave the lights on in their rooms. And all this began to drive our chess piece crazy, but at first it wasn't so noticeable. This minor abuse went on for about eight years, after which Kinger was not in the most appropriate state. And Queenie, because girls have a much more unstable emotional background, was almost on the verge of insanity. And that's when Kane struck the final blow in the story. He stole Queenie at night and hid her in one of the mannequin rooms. There is nothing in this room but a bed, and the door is just a fake door. And in fact, there is no door in this room. And so Queenie ended up in a room with no door, a bed, and very bad lighting. And then it was officially announced to everyone that Queenie had turned into an abstracted monster. We know what happened to Kinger, but Queenie was actually around the rest of the digital circus, but no one knew it. And you won't believe it, but Queenie is still in this room, and when Pomni, Jax, and Regatha passed this very room, she was happy and screamed in the hope that she would be heard. But as we know from the pilot episode, our heroes just passed by because they didn't hear anything like that. And now it's time to talk about the second episode, in which Queenie will find a way to outwit Kane and get out of her trap. When this happens, no one will be surprised. All the characters will be completely confused and shocked by what is happening. But we will see an improvement in Kinger's mental state, as the loss of his wife was the main trigger for him. Once Queenie is able to get out, she will be able to tell the rest of the characters what is going on, and their world will be completely turned upside down. They realize what the amazing digital circus really is, and they all turn a little bit into Kaufmo because now they're all obsessed with finding a way out, so they don't have to go through the same situation as Queenie. But what will happen to Kane? Of course he will be shocked by everything that is happening, and his anger and aggression will reach a whole new level. He will immediately show his true face and no longer need to hide behind the mask of a kind administrator. And of course he will make Queenie his main target, and after a few days, he will turn her into an abstracted monster. This is how the story of Queenie and the Digital Circus will really end, but it will add a huge excitement and desire to get into the head of absolutely every character. Despite the fact that her role in the new episode will only last for a short time, she will still be the key character of the episode. Well, what if we don't see Queenie, but someone else? Let's talk about Pawn. I think it's easy to guess that this is the brother of our favorite Pomni. As we know, Pomni is about 25 years old, while Pawn is about 26, 28 years old. Before Pomni went to the Digital Circus, they were very good friends, and at the moment when Pomni teleported to the Digital Circus, Pon was next to her, and when it happened, he was shocked by what happened. At first he didn't even realize what had happened to his sister and thought it was some new trick, but as soon as he realized the reality of what was happening, he immediately tried to understand how it could happen and wore the damn headset all the time to get to his sister and try to save her. But then he didn't know what was really going on. When he entered the Digital Circus, he immediately found Pomni. Everyone remembers Pomni's mental state at the end of the pilot episode. To be honest, there was almost nothing left of that positive and engaging girl. So when she saw her brother, her mood immediately improved and they started thinking about how to find a way out. Pomni told him about all the strange things she had observed during her short time in the circus, and unlike everyone else, Pon immediately believed and trusted her. Pomni also recalled her entire first day at the digital circus and got caught up in a fascinating detail. Remember the moment of conversation between Pomni and Ragatha? At first, Pomni's hand was as weird as the rest of Ragatha's, but as soon as Ragatha said it could be healed, but only Kane could do it, the glitches on Pomni's hand immediately disappeared. But as soon as she stopped thinking about it, the glitches returned. After thinking about it, Pomni and Pon realized that Pomni actually has a power that no one else has and that she can compete with Kane. There are also theories that those doors labeled exit were not randomly generated by the digital circus, but were Pomni's thoughts that she accidentally managed to transfer into the digital circus. After a moment's thought, they decided that as soon as Kane came up with another task, they would immediately create that very door and try to figure out how to bypass the void so that this space wouldn't paralyze their bodies. But since Pomni is also an administrator, she will simply create some kind of capsule that will keep their bodies normal, but at the same time protect them from detection. But unfortunately no one, not even Ragatha, no believe in her plan and will remain in the digital circus, while our Pomni and Pawn will succeed and be able to leave this hellish survival game said. But such a scenario is possible only at the end of the first season, because no one can make Atkuyu plot twist at the very beginning of the season, because it would destroy the interest to watch a huge audience, but agree that it would be insanely interesting. I also want to talk about another character, Jaxie. Remember the interesting concept of having a character that looks like Jax, but he's very feminine. 
I thought for a long time that Jax was actually a girl, but I realized that it had no connection to reality. More interesting is the theory that Jax, like Kinger, did not enter the digital circus alone, but with his other half. And also remember how I said that Jax was not really a bully at the beginning of his journey in the digital circus, but he was quite a nice and reserved guy, just like his girlfriend Jaxie. And it was because of this overbearing reserve that they became the object of ridicule by the other characters. And then Jax could not answer them in any way because he was afraid to say a single word. And so it went every day. Every day Jaxie and Jax were abused by the other inhabitants of the digital circus. And one day Jaxie just got tired of it. And because she was fixated on these humiliations, the result of this mental state is always the same. Turning into an abstracted monster. It was this situation that provoked Jax to become the bully we see in the pilot episode. First he drove all those who destroyed his love crazy and then he just liked this behavior and maybe he even got great pleasure from it so he cannot stop. In fact, there are a huge number of different theories that will drive you crazy, and exactly the same number of characters. Is that the abstracted characters didn't really die, but managed to escape, even though to everyone else in the circus it looks like the character no longer exists in the real or digital world. But before we start our video, we want to tell you a little bit about Kaufmo, because we need it for further understanding. Kaufmo was a clown who was always trying to cheer up the other inhabitants of the digital circus, but they just let him know that Kaufmo didn't think he was funny, which made him depressed. But at some point, he started going crazy, always talking about a way out, which made everyone treat him even worse. And in the end, you know what happened. We start now, well, and you do not forget to subscribe to the channel, put a like, and write a comment. Since there have been many such incidents before Kaufmo, and we still don't know the exact reason why characters turn into abstracted monsters, it's very likely that Kinger will be the next one to be abstracted. Even some other characters talk about it, like Zubel, who was sure that Kinger would be the first to be abstracted. However, the situation turned out differently, and the first to be abstracted was not Kinger, but Kaufmo. Kinger has been in this circus the longest, and this is one of the factors that may have influenced his madness. And the fact that a person from the real world has joined the digital circus is already a very strong stress factor that not everyone can resist. Well, and maybe his broken psyche could be influenced by the loss of his wife. The mystery of the Black Queen is still unknown to us. How is she connected to Kinger? Are these characters connected or not? We don't know yet, but the hints given by the authors are quite interesting. What's a Black Queen when all the characters are completely different? It's not like they all turn into chess pieces. Each image corresponds to the character's personality and maybe his inner state or his affiliation to something. About Kinger, we know for sure that he is constantly panicking or afraid of everything. Not even that he is panicking or afraid, but that he just behaves quite inappropriately even in the calmest situations. Kinger can talk about something and then suddenly forget what he was talking about, or he can go into himself for a while and not notice the people around him and then get scared. In general, Kinger is definitely an unstable and unstable person. I repeat that we do not know exactly how the characters can abstract and what exactly happened to Kaufmo the Clown. But if we take such a factor as insanity, Kinger may be on the line and we may not see him in the next screensaver. The next person I want to talk about is Zubel. As strange as it sounds, she might be the one who gets abstracted in the next episode, or even the next one after Kaufmo, because we don't know in which episode it might happen. It's ironic because she said that Kinger will be the first one it will happen to. Zubel has the most complex personality of all the inhabitants of the digital circus. She certainly doesn't panic like Kinger. Not to say she behaves inappropriately, but she is very rude, grumpy, and irritable. She doesn't really like where she is, and Zubel clearly wants to get out of the circus. But because she doesn't know how to do that, her tension grows and her mental health suffers as a result. Remember how I said that every character is out of something, but not Zubel. And that might be because of her inner world, because Zubel doesn't know who she is. In general, all the characters here don't remember their names and probably don't remember their previous lives, but they show up in the digital circus with something to identify themselves with. Obviously, Zubel had or has a big identity problem, because not only did she forget who she was, she didn't even know it. And as I understand it, Zubel has this condition all the time, which can be a serious factor for abstraction. Because while someone is a happy clown who tells jokes all the time, someone is a frightened member of the royal family or a chess fan, and someone is just an animal. Zubel doesn't know what she is, and the sad thing is, that's exactly how she feels. And eventually, Zubel may just get tired of it all and make the only decision she thinks is right, to turn into an abstracted monster. After Kinger and Zubel, our ragged Ragatha could be next. After all, there were already signs that she was slowly going insane, and it affected the abstracted character as well. Despite the fact that Kane was able to cure her in the first stage of the glitch, the residue on her psyche will clearly stay with her forever, because Ragatha has experienced the pain that the rest of the characters feel at the moment of abstraction. At best, Ragatha should have her memory erased, but as Kane himself said, 
The mind is one of the few things he can't control. It may be for the best, but the consequences are clearly ahead of Ragatha, especially since she's acting like she's not who she says she is. Ragatha is an optimistic character, kind, reasonable, and sensible, but there is a touch of madness at times, which makes it seem as if Ragatha is just trying to act normal, when in fact she is thinking in a completely different way. We don't know for sure if she can keep it up, and what will happen to her if she breaks down and shows her true mental state. A similar situation could happen with Jax. It's unlikely, but we can't know for sure because we don't have access to more plot. But Jax himself may not turn out to be the cool guy we see in the pilot. He may be an insecure and damaged kid at heart who makes jokes, and not just jokes, and openly mocks the weak in order to create an illusion of coolness around him. And all of this mask that Jax hides behind can come off in an instant. His behavior is just a psychological defense. He doesn't care about others, and he doesn't even hide it. He may just be pretending to be cool, and this is evidenced by his bullying of the weak. All of this tells us that all it will take for Jax to be abstracted is an accident. An accident that causes Jax to drop his mask of toughness and become afraid. It is when Jax realizes that he is as helpless as the rest of the inhabitants of the digital circus, and it is at that moment that he can go mad, and his fate is already predetermined. It seems that Gangle has more chances to go crazy than Jax, but on the other hand, she never hid her true feelings, and still doesn't. You can see that she never panics and almost never cries, she's just sad all the time, literally all the time, all because her mask of comedy has shattered and only the mask of tragedy remains. Whether she can change these masks as faces, or whether she puts one mask on top of another is still unknown, but if she could change her face, it would obviously affect her mood. However, it seems that her real face is the mask of tragedy. Then how can the gangle dissipate? Actually, the trigger could be more bullying behavior on Jax's part. Maybe one day it will be the last straw for her, and eventually she'll just want to run away, go away, dissolve, be abstracted, just so it doesn't happen to her again because she just can't take it anymore. But that can only happen if no one stands up for her. And of course, nobody can rule out the possibility that something like this could happen to Pomni herself. On the one hand, it might seem impossible, because she is the main character, but someone might say that in Amazing Digital Circus there might be a bad ending, which will result in either the death of the main character or her abstraction. We'd have to find out what abstraction is. Let's say abstraction is exit or abstraction is madness. In the first case, it's kind of a good ending, because Pomni will be able to get out of the digital hell, but in the second case, Pomni turns into a monster, which is not so happy. In other contexts, it is hard to abstract her, because if you use logic and think about it, it could have happened at the beginning. When you tell her that, she also starts to go crazy, because she keeps trying to convince herself that it's all a dream, and Pomni keeps talking about some kind of exit. Also, the situation in the secret room and the very end of the pilot episode of Amazing Digital Circus scream to us that Pomni has started to go crazy, but we can't say for sure how far it can go, but theoretically we can say that Pomni, along with others, can finally go crazy against the background of the constantly flickering door, as well as not understanding why no one believes her. Well, and we can't really consider an abstract candidate like Kane. You may think this is complete nonsense, but let me explain my point of view. As we saw in the trailer for Digital Circus, Kane was once an ordinary person like everyone else, but at some point his consciousness was deliberately transported into digital space. And so, despite all his responsibilities and the tasks and conditions he needs, Kane wants to return to the real world just like everyone else. Like Pomni, he knows that there is a way out of this circus, but he can't find it. Maybe because he is under constant surveillance and any wrong action will lead to his death. Or because the main creator decides that he doesn't need an administrator like Kaney anymore and writes a computer code that will turn Kaney into an abstract monster. Of course, this is practically impossible, but for the fun of it, why not tell you about it? What is this? Well, it's nothing unusual, it's just that Pomni is sleeping very well. Let's leave her alone for now. It's actually very strange to say that this is the teaser of the second episode, because some people consider the pilot episode to be the first episode, and some people convince everyone that the pilot episode is just an introductory part before the first episode, but many people still consider it to be the first episode. So we're going to watch the teaser of the second episode. Remember the hilarious wacky watch that took us to a weird website that had a teaser video of the pilot episode, and since it was official, we can say that this video that you will see in a few seconds is indeed a teaser of the new episode. That's really what we were shown, just a looped short video of Pomni sleeping sweetly in his new room. I sat there like an idiot for about five minutes waiting for some kind of continuation, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. But even such a short episode gives us a lot of information, so let's start analyzing this teaser. The first thing to notice is Pomni's bed. You can see that it is exactly the same as Pomni's clothes. The same colors and the same pattern in alternating stripes, which means that Pomni is definitely in her room and has not accidentally snuck into someone else's room and made a bed there. This is also supported by the color scheme of the room itself, 
which is dominated by blue and red. Pay attention to what is behind Pomni. There is a dark area in the middle of the bright room, and on the sides you can see red curtains. So there's something in there worth shutting yourself off from. At first I thought it was a door, but that version was immediately unusable because it would be very inconvenient. Imagine you open the door and the first thing you see is someone's bed. I have a hunch that there is nothing there and that this so-called hole is the connection between rooms with other characters. I know that would be very weird, but this is the amazing digital circus we're talking about. Maybe this teaser is a reference to a very old leak of Pomni's room, because originally it was shown that this room is made in darker colors and there are a lot of little cane flying around the sleeping Pomni. And if you look closely, you can see that in the original concept, Pomni's bed was in the same colors as Kane's. So it's likely that once the characters get to the digital circus, they'll spend the first few hours in Kane's room before settling into their own. To summarize a bit of the analysis before we get to the theories, I would like to say that Pomni's room is very consistent with her image as a fool, because Kaufmo's room, which is kind of a clown, was very dark, but it's very silly to judge because we haven't seen her original appearance. Also remember Gangle's room, which is also very gloomy. I'm very glad that Pomni's room reflects the essence of Digital Circus, because even if you combine Gangle and Kaufmo's rooms, they still won't be as interesting as the room from the teaser. Now let's get to the theories one of which will be about the new release date, so be sure to watch to the end. You can see how tired Pomni is because she is not embarrassed for a second by the very bright lighting around her. I'm sure that this teaser is the very beginning of the second episode, which is a continuation of the plot of the pilot episode. But why the room? I think it will be one of the key locations of the second episode and something will happen in it that will make us very worried. Maybe even someone will be abstracted, and maybe it will be Kinger, maybe it will be Zubel, maybe it will be Jax. I will not reveal all the cards yet because I already have a video on this topic and you will be able to see it in the near future. Or the room is a reflection of the character's inner state. So while Pomni's mental health is good, her room looks so bright and colorful, but as soon as she starts having some problems, we'll see her room fade and turn into something creepy. And maybe this teaser tells us that Pomni is doing well so far, but the second episode will make her go a bit crazy, and at the very end of the new episode we will see her room in a different state. A clear confirmation of this theory is that Kaufmo's room was hardly always like this. But when he went completely insane, we saw from the bright clown's room, some room where the psychopath lived. The second theory is even crazier, and it says that Pomni is actually a circus performer and is currently sleeping in his dressing room, and the horror she experienced in the pilot episode is just a bad dream. But all the characters we were shown are real people in costumes and then the whole plot will be built around the circus, but not digitally, but quite real. And finally about the teaser and the release date of the new episode. As we remember from my previous videos, we were already shown a little message wishing us a Merry Christmas and saying that we will see more of the digital circus very soon. That was the first hint of the new episode, but if we see the teaser, it means that the episode is 99% finished, and there are still some things to be done like voice acting, color correction, or dubbing. Based on the fact that we are already so heated up with various news and leaks, we can safely say that the new episode is expected in the next 3-4 weeks. Maybe even by the end of January we will be able to make tea, buy sweets, and enjoy 20-25 minutes of quality and interesting animation. With the teaser out of the way, let's talk about a very interesting leak, the concept of the digital circus itself. We've seen different parts of the circus, but we've never been shown the entire structure. At first glance, the entire digital circus appears to be just two huge rooms, one of which is a common room, and the second of which contains a corridor with doors leading to other characters' rooms. But if you take a closer look at the concept, you can easily see that the digital circus consists of five floors. But I will come back to that later, because I have a very interesting assumption about how all these rooms will be used. Right away we can say that the height of the digital circus is huge, because in the pilot episode we only saw the first floor, but we can already understand how high the ceilings of each floor are. But if you look closely, you'll find the famous Pomni. And if we take into account that their height in the digital circus is about 150 centimeters, and that one floor is as high as six Pomni, we can easily say that one floor is about nine meters high, i.e. the first three floors already give us 27 meters. The fourth floor is a little higher, about 12 meters, and the extreme point of the fifth floor is 25 meters. In total, we get that the height of the circus is 64 meters, which in modern realities is about the height of a 22-story building. Imagine how big this digital circus is. And on the concept art, we see the castle where some of the events of the pilot episode took place. But if it is emphasized so much, then most likely in the next episodes, we will be able to see it from the inside, and maybe it will play an important role in some episode. I think it will probably be some new Kane adventure of the fun horror variety. For example, he will kidnap Ragatha and lock him up in one of the castle rooms, 
and the rest of the characters will have to solve puzzles, face evil dummies and so on to find the key and free the kindest and nicest character. We were also shown some flying figures and a bubble tower, but I think they're just decoration and unlikely to be really interesting for us in the future. Remember how I said that you can find Pomni in this concept, so its location is no coincidence either. I am 100% sure that this location is the place where our characters live, the so-called dormitory. And this sitting area was already shown to us in the pilot episode. I also noticed another old room on the fifth floor. This place is called the Crow's Nest, but for some reason, the author called it funny. Let's find out what it is and what crows have to do with it. As funny as it may sound, the birds are not important here, because the crow's nest is called an observation post in the form of an open barrel on the ship. So this place is for observation. But how can you see anything from there when it is on the fifth floor and the main action so far has been on the first floor? But there's an important clue that suggests there might be a small cafe inside. And now I have the whole picture. Remember the place where Kane and Bubble had lunch? That's the cafe in the crow's nest. But we see trees in the windows, and the concept says that this place is inside the digital circus tent. Actually, it's easy to explain because it doesn't take much time and effort to build an artificial park, but I still haven't answered the question of how you can see anything from there if it's an observation post. Friends, come to your senses. We live in the digital age, and the digital circus is a huge, sophisticated, and high-quality technology. And the essence of the observation post is that only in this place work radars on the watch. Kane, one of these radars, by the way, we have already seen because it was he who discovered the infiltration of Pomni in the void. A separate mystery of this concept are strange shaded rooms whose purpose we do not even suspect, but most likely in the new episodes we will reveal their mystery. And just so you know, there is a concept of the first floor with a view from above. But what's really interesting about this concept are the balconies. On the one hand in a circus they should be for the audience, and it's logical and understandable, but the amazing digital circus is a show or a game. So what are the balconies for? Maybe to create a real circus atmosphere, but what if someone from the real world could come into the digital circus and watch everything from above, unnoticed by our characters? Maybe it is a circle of very rich people who financed this project, or ordinary gamers who put on a headset and joined the audience. Maybe some of our characters once watched all of this, but just do not remember it or have erased the memory from their minds. And now to the latest leak, the Gloink's Queen concept art. I don't know why it was shown to us, but there is a possibility that this character, despite being an NPC, will appear in future Kane missions. Right away we see that she has four mouths, the question is why. The answer is, I don't know. But one head is the main head because it can talk and eat, and the second head is only created to give birth to new glowings. In this scene we see garbage and various objects turning into these glowings. Actually it will be a vicious circle, because garbage turns into glowings. Glowinks bring their queen new garbage and she eats it and creates new glowinks. Well, the rest of the mouths just don't make sense and are made for fun. Well, and a colorful conclusion will be a clarification from the authors themselves that the glowinks queen resembles a garbage bag full of solid objects, which is generally true. We know roughly what the rest of the series will be about, and to be honest, I have the suspicion that the second episode of Digital Circus is already finished if we look at it from the animation side. But the dubbing, final editing, color correction, and other things are not finished yet, so we haven't seen the new episode yet. And in fact, the creators are not rushing to release the new episode because the popularity of the pilot episode has not fallen so much, so Gooseworks and Glitch can wait a little longer to bring the second episode to the ideal state. And at the moment, when the pilot episode almost lost its popularity, we will see the release. But what the creators do now, like any other entertainment show that is released quite rarely, Digital Circus needs constant discussion. And for that, the creators show us little spoilers or leaks. And one of these so-called spoilers we saw recently. It is hard to call it a spoiler, but I will. Remember the post on Twitter where Glitch wished us a Merry Digital Christmas? They told us that they, like us, are looking forward to the new year 2024, which will bring us new episodes of The Amazing Digital Circus, Murder Drones, and news about their new show Gaslight District. I'm very excited about this new project myself, but that's not what I'm talking about. Let's talk a bit about the picture that accompanied this Christmas post. The image itself is a separate kind of art, and I think everyone was immediately struck by the abstracted Kaufmo as a Christmas tree. It feels as if our clown has been brought out of the basement to decorate it and put it on public display. Now, as I understand it, each character gets their own gift here, and be sure to remember that, because this information will be very useful to us later on. Remember how Jax finally broke Gangle's Mask of Joy, so Zubal decided to give him the Mask of Joy, and you can see how Gangle is very happy with this gift even without the mask. 
Ragatha took care of Kinger and gave him a pillow so he could continue building his impregnable fortress. And Jax, in his usual way, decided to make a little joke and found somewhere a centipede that is very afraid of Ragatha. And who Jax decided to give this centipede to, I guess, is no secret. And if we go back to the post, we can safely say that the new episode of The Digital Circus will be released next year. But I think we all knew that, because hardly anyone thought that we will be able to see the continuation of The Circus only in 2025. But I remember that some people said that the new episode will be released at the end of December 2023, but that's not the point. Remember the day the amazing Digital Circus pilot came out, and knowing how much glitch can delay episodes after pilot episodes like Murder Drones or Has Been Hotel, viewers began to seriously worry that our Digital Circus would repeat their fate. But I can assure you with 100% certainty that this will not happen. And the announcement of the first episode of Has Been Hotel is already on the internet. And its release will take place on January 19th, which is also important for us as fans of the Digital Circus. At first, like many of you, I was afraid that the new episode would be delayed too long and no one would be interested in it. And if you draw a logical chain, you can easily see that less interest leads to less motivation for the creators to release new episodes, and so on in a circle. But no other series in history has ever had such an insane success, which means that the audience's interest will surely be maintained for a few more months. And Gooseworks says there will be episodes, so we don't have to worry about that. And of course, Glitch is telling us that 2024 is going to be an amazing year, and that we will definitely see new episodes of the Digital Circus. And not only Digital Circus because some of you are waiting for the last episodes of Drones, and some of you are very interested in a new project with an interesting name Gaslight District. So we just have to wait, and luckily for us, we have to wait a little bit. And that's very good news. Before I answer the main question of the whole video, I would like to talk a little bit about another leak from Gooseworks that I find very interesting. Everyone knows what the amazing Digital Circus logo looks like now, but I think a small percentage of people have seen the previous versions, and an even smaller percentage have tried to understand and analyze them. So let me do the work. The actual logo of the amazing Digital Circus directly refers us to the era when the game was first created. Although we are not directly told about the release date of the game itself, but the characters, the design of the circus and, most importantly, the commercials of the amazing Digital Circus tell us that the initial action took place between 1990 and 1995. There was also a moment I never mentioned. Remember at the very end of the pilot episode we were shown Pomni's desktop in the real world. So look at the headset, the design and condition of which screams that it is at least 20 years old, maybe even 30. Just look at modern VR goggles and compare. Now let's talk about the logos. The very first version of the logo is quite cute but we can definitely say that it doesn't fit the concept of the digital circus because it clearly lacks colors and saturation. Let's put it this way, it's too dark for an overly bright circus. I'm pretty sure this was the first version because the next logo is already brighter and more or less fits the circus idea. But as someone who knows a little bit about design, I immediately noticed a lot of unnecessary details, like the rainbow line for example. And the background is superfluous here, because in combination with the rainbow outline, all the text merges, and it is very difficult to understand what is written there. Yes, and if you look at this logo for a long time, you can really turn into Pomni. And the last option is already our final logo, which is perfect in everything. It immediately reflects the main meaning of the series and makes us realize that we are dealing with a digital circus. Now let's talk about when the next episode will be. Since we were honestly told that the next episode should be expected in 2024, the closest dates I consider is the end of January. But you have to understand that it will be in the best case. But unfortunately, I do not really believe in it. Because if you count from the release date of the pilot episode, it will be only three and a half months. But the middle of February would be the most suitable date. Because it will be exactly four months. Which is quite acceptable for the next episode. So what if the release is not in January or February? Such a development should also be considered, because as I've said several times, The Amazing Digital Circus is a massive project that requires a lot of time, people, and money. Fortunately, the creators have everything they need. Well, if the release will not be in winter, then March will be the last time for the release. Because you should realize that the popularity of the Digital Circus is not the same as before, so the longer the creators will delay the release of the next episode, the worse result they will get in the end. Remember I told you about Christmas presents and the release date of the first episode of Has Been Hotel and asked you to remember it. So I think that these presents are a hint from the authors to us, letting us know that the release of the new episode will be like a present, and that means that it will probably appear much sooner than we think. And at the same time, since the full episode of Has Been Hotel will be released on January 19th, we have to realize that Glitch can't release the digital circus right away, so we'll have to wait a bit. 
which is why I think February as the most ideal date. But there's always hope in our hearts. So to sum up, we can say that the most likely release date will be the middle of February, somewhere between February 10th and 20th. Of course, I would like to see the new episode already in January, but I would also not like to wait until March. Well, since we have already talked about all the details of the new episode release, we can relax a bit and talk about what we already know and what will be next in our amazing series. There will be a total of eight episodes ranging from 20 to 30 minutes in length. Six of the eight episodes will focus on individual characters. We have already seen the episode with Pomni, and we also know that the third episode will be completely dedicated to Zubal, who is a really unique and interesting character, despite the fact that he or she may not seem so at first glance. Let's assume that Zubal is a girl, Zubal doesn't understand who she is, and to be honest, none of the characters fully understand who they are, but there is a huge difference between them and Zubal. Everyone else identifies in some way. For example, Jax is a bully boy who enjoys bullying other characters. Ragatha is a sweet and vulnerable girl who wants to help everyone, and so on with everyone else. While Zubal cannot identify in any way because this character does not even understand his gender identity. But why do you have to dedicate each new episode to a different character? We already know that they all have their own problems, and that they are all crazy in their own way. In fact, we know that each character represents some kind of mental disorder that not only represents them but also follows them throughout the plot of the digital circus. But how these problems appeared in the characters, what caused them, and how they will deal with them, we do not know exactly. That's what my channel is for, where I solve all these mysteries for you. Maybe one of the characters will not be able to cope with his mental problem and will turn into an abstracted monster, or maybe on the contrary, he will be able to heal and return to normal life. To sum up, each episode will be like a separate series with the history of each character, where we will learn about the past of our heroes, what difficulties they have overcome in order not to go crazy like many others who did not manage this difficult task, as well as we will reveal each character in more detail and perhaps give a hint of what will happen to them in the final episode of the first season of The Amazing Digital Circus. After all, I think it is logical if the eighth episode will be a certain point in the history of absolutely every character, and all the episodes before it will be just a subplot to it. Let's just say that Pomni is the main character of the digital circus. We can even say that she became the most recognizable symbol of the circus. And besides, the pilot episode was dedicated to her, which means that her next appearance as the main character of the episode will either not take place at all, or the final eighth episode will be dedicated to her. And as Gooseworks themselves stated, Zubal, despite all her ambiguity and strangeness, will also get some screen time, but it will only be in the third episode, so it makes no sense to consider her as a candidate for the main role in the second episode. We've decided everything, and now let's talk about our characters, because one of them will definitely be the main character of the new episode. Let's start with Gangle. This simple and uninteresting character hides a big secret. At least we don't know the truth about her face. Are her two masks really masks? Or is her real face a mask of sadness? Or maybe she has no face at all? Also, in the pilot episode, we were shown very little about Gangle. All we learned was that Gangle is a crybaby who is afraid of any sound and worries a lot about everyone else. And yes, she is Jax's favorite because he doesn't make fun of anyone. Why is Gangle so quiet? What happened to her before? And has she always been like this? I think that despite her low rating, a lot of people would be interested to know more about her. But again, I will repeat that Gangle is not as popular as many other characters, and the creators understand this very well. And therefore, to fix the digital circus as the main animation project on YouTube, they need to make an episode about someone who has at least some popularity and interest from the audience. And all this tells us that the chance that Gangle will be the main character of the second episode is very small. I will give a maximum of 5% to this option. But the fifth or sixth episode may well be dedicated to our cute crybaby Gangle. Now let's look at the most likely candidates. And the first one I'd like to mention is Ragatha. Ragatha is the sweetest and definitely the cutest character in the digital circus. I mean, just look at her. Even her movements after Kane healed her seem pretty cute to me. But now on to something else. Ragatha is a very popular character in the digital circus, and everyone remembers the scene where our puppet had a panic attack because of memories and thoughts of leaving the digital circus. I think that if it happens that Ragatha will be the main character of the new episode of the digital circus, her storyline will often overlap with Pomni, and it would be very logical because we were shown that the girls have built a good relationship with each other, because in the same scene with her healing, she came and stood next to Pomni and not with anyone else. And in this case, it will be logical to make a continuation of the pilot episode where Pomni and Ragatha will look for a way out of the digital horror together, but only more attention will be paid to the story of the doll instead of the jester. 
but it could be that each new episode will not be connected to the previous one, but will be a separate story. And in this case, Ragatha can also fit the role of the main character of the episode, but I think it is unlikely, because many people, including me, want to see how the process of abstraction happens, and I think that in the new episode we can show it, and in this case, Ragatha is not suitable, because it will be very painful and unpleasant to lose such a nice character. So I will give a maximum of 25-30% that Ragatha will be the key character of the new episode. And talking about abstraction, it would be wrong not to start our part about a chess fan or just a genius madman kinger. After all, if we stick to the theory that the new episode will be built around the abstraction of some character, we can't find a better candidate. Kinger is a very strange and fearful man indeed. He's probably afraid of everything. Characters, sounds, and his strange movements at random moments make us realize that maybe his best days are over, and it's time to forget all the horrors that happen in the digital circus. I think the Kinger himself has long since ready read, but maybe someone or something is keeping him inside the digital circus, forcing him to go through this torture every day, every unbelievably horrible day. But on the other hand, many people are really fans of this chess piece and are waiting for a new episode to see the transformation of his madness, or on the contrary, waiting for his healing. Let's talk about two variants of the plot of the new episode, because the probability of Kinger becoming the main character of the new episode depends on it. If we present the plot of the second episode as the exact transformation of some character into an abstract monster, then it is unlikely that Kinger will become the protagonist, because as I said before, his fan base is very large and such a part of the audience may simply lose interest. So in this case, I can give only 30% that we will see Kinger as the protagonist of the second episode. But if the new episode will be a separate story of some character, then I think that 50% chance that it will be Kinger, why 50 and not 100 I will tell you later. Remember how I said that there are a lot of secrets around Gangle, so her partner in the pilot episode has a lot more of them and they are much more interesting. And in general, I think the real story of Kinger should be very fascinating, especially his past. After all, it is still not clear what happened at the end that made him so strange. And of course, the silhouette that looks so much like Kinger is a mystery to everyone trying to figure out what it is. And if we are told all this, and at the same time the development of the plot of the pilot episode is shown in some places, it will be a perfect second episode. Remember how I said I could only give 50% of Kinger as the main character of the new episode and said I'd explain later? The thing is that not only Kinger has a huge fandom, but Jax is probably the second most popular character in the Amazing Digital Circus, after Pomni, of course. And again, I only give him 50% for his appearance, and here's why. Jax's story is not as interesting as Kinger's, but his behavior raises a lot of questions among the viewers. No one understands why he behaves so horribly towards the other inhabitants of the Digital Circus. They are stuck in this place forever just like him, and instead of trying to make friends and have fun, Jax just does what he does to mock and ridicule everyone else. Finding out the reason for this behavior, i.e. our bunny's past, would be insanely interesting. And in general, it would be interesting to see how Jax shows his relationships with other characters of the Digital Circus, or vice versa. If he gets bored with his actions, it would be interesting to see how he behaves in that case. And remember what I said about the fandom for this character. I think his story is as much expected as Kinger's, so it's hard to say who will be the main character of the new episode. And again, if the plot of the new episode will be built around the abstraction of any character, then in this case the maximum 15% that it will be Jax. Because as we know there are fans of the whole series, and there are those who watch a series because of a certain character, and with the digital circus is the same situation. As you have already noticed, Jax and Kinger have the highest probability to be the main characters of the new episode. Let's compare them quickly and make a small conclusion, and right after that I have someone else for you whose role could be very important in the next episode, and you write your opinion about who I'm talking about in the comments. Both characters have a huge fan base that will not forgive you for turning their favorite character into an abstract monster, but at the same time, the more popular the character is, the more popular the episode in which that character is the main character, and since Jax actually has a higher popularity than Kinger, it would be wise to devote a new episode to Jax namely his past history and such, and continue the story of the pilot episode. That said, no character in the new episode should turn into an abstracted monster. And in this case, I am 75-80% sure that the new episode will be dedicated to our favorite rabbit Jax. By the way, why doesn't he have a tail? Maybe you know? And the promised character that might appear in the new episode, but will probably not be the main character, is Kaufmo. It is possible that he will play a supporting role, where he will tell absolutely everything he knows about the basement about Kane, and about everything else. But if this happens, it will be a complete plot twist, because in this case we will learn that it will be possible to return from the terrible world Kaufmo was in in the pilot episode. And there will also be the possibility of the reappearance of all those characters who have been scattered for a long time. 
But as I said about Kaufmo, they won't be the main characters of the episodes because we already have the main characters, but as secondary characters, I would be very happy to see them. And I want to say something about Kane and Pomni. If everything is clear with Pomni, and even if the new episode will be a full continuation of the pilot episode with Pomni in the main role, it would be very interesting to know more about Kane. Honestly, Kane's story is the most mysterious to me, because even if he is an AI, who created him? And if he was a human whose consciousness was transferred to the AI, it's also interesting to hear how he felt at that moment. If Kane will be the main character of the new episode, I think we will definitely be able to find out all his secrets and answer one of the main questions of the digital circus. Is Kane really a villain or a savior? But as for the likelihood of both Pomni and Kane being the main characters, I would put it at no more than 2-3% because Pomni was already the main character and Kane is more of an anti-hero and if they are going to tell his story, it will be at the end of the first season. First, let's take a look at the process of creating Kane's movements. You will immediately notice how detailed our Kane is, even at this early stage. And you can see that when he moves, only his arm moves. I wondered for a long time why it was the hand, but if you look closely at even the first scene, it becomes clear that the emphasis of Kane's actions is on the hand. Even the next frame of our cutscene shows how much detail the writers put into that moment. Well, his head movements also make me laugh a lot. Remember the character's first introduction to Kaufmo? Just look at how detailed Kaufmo is. Every part of his body has been brought to perfection. But if you look at the original version, you can see that Kaufmo originally looked very different. He was smooth and had some colored spots instead of eyes. There's another interesting detail in this scene that we'll talk about in a few seconds. If you've guessed what I'm talking about, write about it in the comments. Take a closer look at Regatha's movements when she first saw Kaufmo. Her hands were certainly excited, but not enough to stand up. In the original version, the process of her surprise lasts longer than in the final version, and if you look closely at her hand, you can see that it's rising. But for some reason, that element was removed in the final cut. Let's go back to the scene where we meet Kane. We have frames from the original animation of this scene. You can see that Kane has already been created, but if you look closely at his eyes, they seem very strange. One of them is completely blue and the other one is 80% green. And imagine if our administrator still had those eyes. I think he'd be one of the worst characters in the digital circus. And while the heart looks real, the brain looks like used chewing gum. And also these shots prove that the scene with Kane was shot very first. Because in the final version, we see the territory inside the tent of the digital circus. But in the original version, at the time of the story about the circus, we see only the backstage. And now let's come to the most complicated scene of the whole digital circus. I'm talking about a little fight between Zubal and Jax. You might ask me, what's so hard about that? But take a closer look at Jax's head at that moment. Gooseworks themselves said it took over two weeks just to do that scene. In addition to her, Kevin Temmer and many other animators were involved in the creation of this scene. This is how it turned out when several animators worked together. But as far as I know, Gooseworks did not like the variant with the disappearing head. And it was decided to redo this scene a little bit, which is the final result you see on the screen now. However, Zubal's movements didn't change at all. Now let's take a short break from the video and talk about the various cursed photos that we have accumulated a huge amount of. The first one I want to talk about is Pomni. And this photo perfectly demonstrates the imperfection of the animation in the early stages. Or maybe this photo was shown to use on purpose? Look at the horror of the face in this photo. And the next leak is just as interesting. There are several theories about these unfortunate Pomni shots. Maybe it's just a bad shot during the animation of this scene, but it's not that simple. Like I said, I'm working on several projects at once. Even though Gooseworks told us that they didn't start work on the second episode until after the pilot was released, I don't really believe that. Maybe this is footage of a scene from the new episode, and if that is true, imagine what horrible events they could show us in the future. I mean, for a character to have that creepy grimace on his face would take a lot of effort. What happened to Jax's face? At this point, his eye is attached to his teeth and it looks very creepy, and his face in general leaves a lot to be desired. We also get to see the original version of Jax in this scene. You can see that it was already the final part of the animation preparation. But what interests me the most is this photo. The authors themselves prove that this scene was recreated from an old but very famous meme with a girl and a burning house. Is this just a reference, or does this leak prove something much more important? The girl is very aware of the horror happening around her, but she remains completely calm. And also in her background is a burning house, which even if they can put it out, it will not be the same. And now, look who we have in the shape of the burning house. It's our crazy kinger. Perhaps this is a warning to us that the next abstracted will be this strange chess piece, and even his condition speaks for it. 
because even though he has a huge fan base around him that loves and protects him, he is the main candidate for abstraction in the next episode because his mental state is at a critical point that is very easy to cross. And this is just a funny shot of Gangle with her body split in two for some reason, but I'm pretty sure that's just a bad shot of that scene. I can't even explain what's going on in this shot, it's just that Jax has turned into a very strange creature. And the next picture makes us think that Jax is a secret agent of Kane, and all his actions are just orders from our administrator, and all this construction around Jax's face was made so that he could observe all the characters. Of course it's a joke, because you can see that all these strange shapes match the different elements of Jax's face, and are just the original landmarks of the mouth, eyes, and everything else. Let's take a break from the photos, and go into some very interesting details about some of the scenes. Probably the most frequent guest of this video is the welcome scene that introduces us to Kane and the circus in general. So I have footage from different angles of that scene. Welcome to the amazing digital circus! My name is Kane, I'm your ringmaster, and I'm here to show you the most jaw-dropping, heart-stopping, mind-bending paraphernalia you've ever laid your eyes upon! Isn't that right, Bubble? That's right, Kane! I can't wait to see what you've got cooking up for today! Well, let's not waste any time! Let's also, I think a lot of people will be interested to see the creation of this scene and the interaction of the characters from different angles. We found the Zubo hole. Cool. <sighs> How is Kofmo doing? I hope he's not still mad at me for not laughing at his jokes. Oh, he's doing great. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen him this happy before. Well, it's good to know he hasn't completely lost his mind. He actually asked me to give you this. Whoa! And to be honest, I couldn't go on living if I didn't show you the first meeting of Pomni and Ragatha with the abstracted Kofmo in its original form. Because at least for the sake of the bald Kofmo, it's worth watching to the end. Might be that terrible thing I was talking about earlier, when you reach your breaking point? Huh? <laughs> okay, wait. Maybe there's still time to fix him before we get Kane. <laughs> I know we didn't always get along, like when you called me out for fake laughing at your jokes. I swear I really did think they were funny. I was just having a bit of a bad day. And now let's look at the process of creating this teaser, which is really our introduction to the characters. You can see that Kinger's eyes were originally made completely different from the final result, but all his movements were kept. Zubal also underwent a huge revision because originally her eyelids were supposed to be purple, while in the final version, they are pink. And of course, her body changed from metallic to a beautiful yellow color. We already talked about Kane's eyes, but look at the quality of Bubble. Gangle hasn't changed much either, but it's noticeable that they did a very good job of animating her tears and falling in general. And the scene with Jax and Ragatha, or the introduction scene with Ragatha, is a perfect example of quality post-production, because it is noticeable how Folo was the initial animation of movements and drawing of these characters, but once it came to the final cut, everything became so perfect that I do not even know how it can be repeated. Well, here Pomni decided to present himself as a master dancer, but it looks very funny. These leaks show the animation of our characters' movements, not just the characters, but the abstracted monsters themselves. And I have to tell you, I'm really surprised at how good it all looked even in the original version. And when you look at the same monsters in the final version, you can only applaud the animators of the digital circus. And the dancing kinger is the icing on the cake. I just enjoy watching the process. Remember the teaser where Kane showed us the various aspects of the digital circus? It would be a crime not to get it. In the first shot, we see the main part of the circus tent, which contains the castle, balconies, various structures, and of course the staircase that leads us to the mysterious room. We are also shown a very strange room that contains pipes, or what is it? I'll leave it up to you. Write in the comments what you think it is. We are also shown a cellar with a strange black liquid floating on the floor. Could it be water or oil? Lol, of course not. I think this liquid drains the power of our abstracted monsters, forcing them to stay in this basement for the rest of their lives. And we can't do without a dormitory either, but this monster's arm doesn't look much like the one we saw in Kaufmo. I also found a funny leak of Ragatha's face on the internet, if I may say so, because this concept art makes us laugh. But if we think more globally, this leak actually proves to us that there is nothing inside each of the characters. No organs, no tissues, no fluids of any kind. They're just digital shells, but where is their consciousness stored? In one of the images, we see a gangle room or a communal toilet. It's hard to say, because on one side we see a sink and a toilet, but then why are there broken funny masks of gangle hanging around? But if this is her room, why does she need a toilet? Because it's obvious to everyone that she doesn't have a body. Instead, she's just a tape. And why would you need a toilet in a room where even the food is digital? 
As you can see, this leak has left many questions and few answers. But the main thing here is the number of broken gangle masks. There are eight of them in total, but it's strange that some broken halves are far away from each other. This means that gangle doesn't have two masks, as everyone thought before, but many more. But what I'm about to say will surprise you. It's actually very strange that only the funny masks break, while the sad mask is always intact. Maybe this sad mask is not a mask at all, but Gangle's real face, but the happy masks are the only thing that can cheer her up. Unfortunately, they are very fragile and break at the slightest bump. Now let's talk about the digital circus itself. On one of the leaks, we were shown a map of the area around the circus. You can see a huge lake with a yacht, and next to the circus itself, there is an amusement park. Maybe in the future, in one of the episodes, we will show scenes that take place in these places. On this map, you can also see a small wooden building that they are trying very hard to hide from us. I assume that this building is nothing but the mysterious restaurant where Kane and Bubble spent their time, or it is a so-called hotel where the mannequins live, waiting for their moment to become a new inhabitant of the digital circus. I think everyone is wondering if there is some kind of premise to abstraction, or if abstraction is the way out and Kaufmo is walking down the street right now enjoying life. There are many theories about this, and some of the evidence can be found right in this clown's room. In at least one of the pictures, we see Kaufmo next to a door that might lead to the real world. But that's not what we're talking about here. Let's look at abstraction not as an exit, but as the direct destruction of one's digital body. And let's get to our amazing digital video. We don't touch Kane and Bubble because we know they are artificial intelligence. Let's move on to our calmest and most balanced character, Kinger. There is a strong possibility that he will be the next to become an abstracted monster. In general, it is surprising that he is still with us, because I have never seen a more psychotic and fearful character. Everything seems clear here, but let's take a closer look. We've already seen Kinger's mental state, which definitely leaves a lot to be desired. But as they say, if you're broken once, you can't be broken twice. I mean, we already see that Kinger is a crazy character, and most likely this will happen not for a week or a month, but for many years. This means that our chess piece has learned to deal with its problems for such a long time and can calmly get out of such a state, and that means that the line that must be crossed to turn into an abstract monster will never be reached by our king. After all, despite everything, Kinger often appears to be a reasonable and even quite brave character. Just look how confidently and calmly he communicates with Gloink's queen, and how bravely he ran to save Zubal, who said in one episode that she was sure Kinger would be next. I mean, no offense, Kinger, but I always thought you would be next. Maybe that's a hint that he might be with us until the end of the first season, but that's not a fact. Frankly, I want to believe that Kinger will be able to overcome all of his fears and doubts, and in that case, there is a good chance that such an experienced and wise character will play a key role in finding the coveted exit. Gangle also has a great chance to get completely confused, lose the last remnants of her confidence, and as a result, turn into an abstracted monster. If it seems to you that the solution to her problems is very simple, because she just needs to put on a comedy mask and everything will be fine. Unfortunately, the digital world is much more complicated and Gangle's problems will not be solved so easily. Of course, she can change her masks or so-called faces, but I am sure that her real face is the mask of tragedy. In favor of this, theory are the words of Gooseworks, and also remember one of the leaks directly related to Gangle. Remember her dark room? Take a closer look at all the masks hanging on the wall. Only masks of comedy, and not a single mask of tragedy on her face. And also, I was immediately reminded of the Christmas picture where Zubal gives Gangle a comedy mask, and at the same moment she smiles. And apparently she can smile even with the tragedy mask on, further suggesting that this mask is her real face. The implication was that Gangle might stay alive, but only if she overcomes her despondency, which is more like depression. And this depression will lead Gangle to a sad end, if not in the next episode, then certainly in the next few episodes. But words like depression and despondency are definitely not characteristic of Zubal, who will be our next contender for the abstraction in the next episode. On the one hand, you could say that I'm crazy, because there are no prerequisites for such a turn of events. But again, you're looking very superficially. If you take a closer look at this character, you'll see that Zubal doesn't identify as a person at all. This character has no idea who to identify as. You, him, or maybe it. Let's call Zubal a woman for the sake of argument, and think about where this might lead in the next few episodes. We've already been officially told that the third episode will be all about Zubal, and while the next episode will definitely keep Zubal alive, the third episode could be crucial to her fate. We know that Zubal has a chest that holds the various parts that make up Zubal, and I'm sure the parts we've seen are just a small part of her equipment. And that's a key feature of this character because she has no image, she's basically a nobody, 
and a nobody who's a nobody can be absolutely anything. And this will be the main challenge of the third episode, where Zubal will have to make a very hard choice, to completely eliminate her personality and throw away her trunk and thus accept herself, and as a result, stay alive, or to remain as uncertain in her choice, and in this case, this problem will haunt Zubal for a long time and eventually lead to sad consequences that, you know. But as with Kinger, I am sure that our strange but interesting Zubal will be fine for the rest of the season. Here we come to a fan favorite and Gooseworks. Of course, we are talking about the famous Jax. I think Jax has the best chance at abstraction, even though it sounds like a load of crap. We all know that Jax wants to be seen as a tough guy who hurts everyone and doesn't care about the opinions and feelings of other characters. But we know that's just an illusion our rabbit has built around him. Jax is not a strong character, which manifests itself in various taunts or his anger and he never misses an opportunity to mock the other characters, especially Gangle. And that's the end of my so-called podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. I wish you good luck and see you soon in new videos that will be released every two days.